Let's get some analysis now with Noor Odeh. She is a Palestinian political analyst, activist and former spokesperson for the Palestinian Authority. She's also a founding and committee member of the Democratic National Assembly of Palestine. And she joins us now from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Really good to have you back with us, Noor. Can we begin with what's happening in Gaza first? We know that it seems Israel's objective here is to push the people of Gaza further and further south, perhaps uh, towards Rafa at this point. But we know conditions in Rafa are intolerable. The, the humanitarian situation there is dire, according to many NGOs, as well as the United Nations. What do you think is Israel's ultimate aim here? Well, thank you for having me. I think Israel's ultimate uh, goal, ultimate aim has uh, not changed, and that it is to get rid of as many Palestinians as it can to expel as many of them as it can outside of the Gaza Strip. Right now, more than half of the population, uh, which is already under starvation because of uh, deliberate Israeli policies, are crammed in less than 20% of the total area of the Gaza Strip, which is the Rafah area bordering Egypt. They have no access to water, to food, uh, to proper medical uh, supplies and medicine. Israel is restricting even medicine for chronic illnesses and basic uh, anesthetics and so on. So it is making life impossible for these starved, uh, displaced uh, civilians. Half of them are children. And I think it will continue to push. Uh, you, you know, uh, if there is no intervention, it will continue to push and hope that Palestinians would simply uh, um, push themselves into uh, the border, into Egypt, uh, trying to save their lives and that of their children. And Noor, as we go to where the White House's Middle East coordinator, Brett McGurk, is back in the region, it comes as it appears that talks for another truce have, uh, have stalled at this point in time. What do you think McGurk is trying to achieve here? Because we know that even among Joe Biden's own Democratic colleagues, the more progressive members of the Democratic Party, uh, they see McGurk as a divisive figure who's really not doing enough to support uh, Palestinian civilians caught up in this conflict. Do you think uh, McGurk will achieve anything during his current visit? Well, I think a lot of the Democrats know that McGurk fits more with the Trump uh, uh, era and the Trump thinking. Uh, than their own in the Democratic Party. And, and really, the gap between Biden and his administration and the base of the Democratic Party and the progressive leaders of that party is very, very wide. Um, and uh, Biden is reading from an old playbook. He doesn't think that there is any circumstance under which there would be an, a, a public disagreement between the United States and Israel, even though Netanyahu continues uh, to really make a fool out of Biden and his assertion that uh, Israel is committed to Palestinian statehood, that Netanyahu is personally committed to that. And the, you know, in response, the Israeli prime minister continues to publicly uh, say that he is not, that he will not accept Palestinian uh, statehood and basically that he will do whatever it is that he wants to do in defiance of the Americans and still expect and full American support, exploiting, of course, the fact that this is an election year and that in his estimation, it will be very difficult for an incumbent president to um, to have a, a you know an all out disagreement with Israel at this point. We've also got a uh, leaked audio now of the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu essentially criticizing Qatar's role in this mm. as a mediator. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it, in some respects, it's no surprise that uh, Netanyahu has made such comments. But how do you think that might affect uh, the peace process in this current uh, conflict going forward? Well, I think one of the many ironies of all of this is the fact that Netanyahu and his government are becoming dead weight for everybody. Uh, they are a liability. And Qatar and Egypt all along have been the grown-ups at this table. They're the ones who've been trying to get a ceasefire uh, in place, trying to get a deal to release Palestinian and Israeli captains, while Netanyahu is invested in something completely differently. This is not his priority. His priority is staying in power, 
is making sure that he is not deposed, uh, that there is no um, a break in the ranks in his own Likud party, that he's not going to face charges or possibly a prison term and that he wouldn't go to early elections. So there is, a, you know, there are diametrically opposed objectives of the differing parties. And I think Qatar will find a lot of support from other international actors who uh, appreciate the fact that uh, the Qataris still want to continue working on a ceasefire, um, you know, for the sake of the civilians affected. Uh, again, we have to keep this in perspective. 2.3 million Palestinians have been under bombardment for 110 days. They are starved as a matter of Israeli policy. 70% of their homes have been destroyed or completely obliterated. This is a an epic uh, a humanitarian disaster. And Israel stands accused of uh, committing genocide. We will hear in less than 24 hours from the International Court of Justice on that. And so Netanyahu is pushing ahead despite all of that because he doesn't see any consequences. He doesn't feel any real pressure from the countries that uh, um, can yield that pressure, namely the United States and even the European Union, the uh, Israel's largest trading party. Okay, Noor Odeh, we will have to leave it there. But really good to get your analysis as always. Thank you so much.